Welcome back boys and girls. This is going to be the last video of the free content in the real-time chat website. So everything after this point is gonna be part of uh, the membership on codingwithmitch.com. So it's uh, you know it's a very reasonable membership. It's in my opinion, insanely cheap, the value that you get from it. But in order to watch the, the socket stuff, you know, the private chat messaging, the public chat messaging, the real-time notification. So like if somebody sends you a friend request, you get a real-time notification. Someone sends you a private chat message, you get a real-time notification. Notification. All this stuff is going to be done with Django channels and WebSockets. That stuff is all going to be paid. So from here, basically after this video, everything will require a membership on my website, which costs thirty dollars Canadian, which is about uh, twenty-two dollars US uh, per month. Or you can sign up yearly for two hundred and forty dollars Canadian, which works out to about twenty dollars Canadian per month. Or if that goes to US, I think that's it's about fifteen dollars a month US. So you know, very very good deal. Definitely high, high value. Nothing but good things I've heard from the, the members on my website. You know, I, I actually challenge you to find somebody who said something bad about my membership. They don't exist. You can go and try. Try all day. You'll just waste your time. But anyway, in this video, what we're going to do is be building the last portion of the friend system, which is displaying a list of who you're friends with. So let's actually take a look at the production website just to kind of show you what this is going to look like. So if we go to openchat.xyz and I go to my profile, the last feature that we're going to be building in this video is when I click on this friend list in my profile, it then shows a list of all the people that I'm friends with. Also, if I was to you know make a search up, up in the top bar here and I search for users, it will then, it will also show the users that I'm friends with. So like this guy I'm friends with, this guy I'm not, this guy I'm not, this guy I am. So it um, it gives me the option also to send them a message, but that's gonna be done in the, the chatting portion of the website. So we are gonna start with the HTML cause I'm just gonna copy paste it. So we wanna create a file in templates, friend, and then call it friendlist.html. So go into the friend app, go into templates, go into friend, create a new file and press control S and save that as friendlist.html. Now let's go back to the HTML, uh, get that back open here. And we are going to copy all of this. And most of this is almost exactly the same as the search uh, template. So like if you go into account and go into search results.html, you can see up, up at the top here, there's actually a comment that says this is basically exactly the same as friendless.html. And it's true, it is. This, this is almost exactly the same file. Uh, the only difference is, uh, you know, actually I can't even think of it. It's probably just the variables in here are slightly different, but the structure and everything is, is pretty much exactly the same. So that's the HTML. Um, I guess I'll quickly uh, kind of, actually, no, you know what? There's no point in me going through it because it was pretty much already gone through when we built the search, uh, the search results.html. So when we build the view, I'll go through the variables, but that's about it. So next we'll actually build that view. So let's go into the friend app, go into views.py and create a new view at the very top here called uh, friend list view. So define friend list view and request do arguments and keyword arguments. Give myself a little bit more space here. I'm gonna create a context, empty Python dictionary, user equals request dot user. So now if user dot is authenticated, then we're going to continue. So user ID uh, equals keyword arguments dot get, and we can get that user ID from those keyword arguments because the URL will contain the user ID of the user whose friends list we are currently looking at. So if the user ID does not equal none, then we can proceed here. We're gonna start with a try catch. So this user is gonna be the user that we're looking at. So account.objects.get primary key equals the user ID. So this is the, the account that we're viewing, the page that we're viewing, whose friends list are we viewing, because we do have the ability to view other people's friends list if we're friends with that person. So that's why we're getting, we're getting, we're calling it this user, because we can technically view other people's friends list other than ourselves. So the context here and do this user, which will be the variable for showing, you know, whose friends list we're actually looking at set it equal to this user. Now the exception that we're going to catch here is account dot does not exist. So if that account doesn't exist, in that case, I want to return an HTTP response and just say, you know, that user does not exist or whatever, just telling them that something went wrong and we can't find that friends list basically. Now I want to get the friend list. So I'm going to use another try accept and just do uh, you know, friend, friend list equals friend list dot objects dot objects dot get and do user equals this underscore user. 
Uh, and again, now we're going to do if that does not exist. So if friend list dot does not exist, then we know we have a problem. They maybe they don't have any friends. I don't know, but there's a problem. HTTP response. We're going to use some string interpolation here and say could not find a friends list for. Uh, and then we can print out the user. So we can say this underscore user dot username. And I always need to wrap text or wrap the word just so uh, it doesn't go carry on kind of forever and you guys get a better view. So now if we pass all that stuff, if we pass those two try accepts, uh, let's do must be friends to view a friends list. So just kind of a confirmation. Are you friends with this person? Meaning, do you have the ability to, to view their or are you allowed to view their friends list? So if user does not equal this user, that's kind of the first check. Um, Cause if you're trying to view, view your own profile, then you know, you're good. We don't have to perform any more checks. Uh, and then if not user in friend list dot friends dot all. So we're accessing it. We're accessing the friend list of this user. And then we're checking to see if the authenticated user. So me, if I'm present in that list, if I'm present in that list, then we know we're good. So this is if we're not present in that list. So if I'm not present in that list, I'm going to say HTTP response. Uh, you must, you must be friends with, or you must be friends to view their friends list. Just to check, you know, are you allowed to be doing what you're doing now? Here comes kind of the tricky part. So I'm going to set an, an empty list to, to friends or set friends equal to an empty list. Uh, now I want to, this is going to be kind of like, I think we did it in the, uh, search in this account search view. Yeah, here. So this is the same kind of structure. So we want to, we want to create a list and the list entries will have two kind of variables, the account, and then a Boolean designating whether you are friends with them or not. So if you have like account one in here, say, and you are friends, it would be true. If you had account two in here, say, and you aren't friends, it would be false and so on and so on. So I'm going to copy this. And we're using the same, the same kind of, this is the same game here, the same structure that we're going to have here. You know, are here's account one. Are you friends? Yes. Account two, no, and so on and so on. So let's, uh, let's set this up. So what we're going to do is get the authenticated users friend list. So auth user friend list is what I'll call it. And I'll do friend list dot objects dot get user equals the authenticated user. Now I want to loop through those friends. So for friend in friend or so I want to loop through the other friend list. So for friend in friend list dot friends dot all. And now I want to now I want to append the friends. So friend whoops friends dot append. Remember when you're working with a Python list, you use dot append to add something to that list. Now the first entry or the entry will be friend. So in other words the account and then we want to do auth user friend list dot is mutual friend is mutual friend and pass that friend. So is mutual friend is a function that we built inside of the friend list object. So if we go to our uh, friend list object right here. Remember we have this is mutual friend uh, function here. So basically it just determines if the person, if this friend is within your friends list, if you guys are mutual friends. So that's what we're doing here. We're looping through the friends list of the user whose profile we're looking at. Then I'm appending the friend and saying auth user friend list. So my friend list, and I'm saying, are we both mutual friends with that person? Or I guess in other words, a better way to put it is, am I friends with that person? So I'm going to, I'm going to be looking at their friend list, but it's going to tell me if I'm friends with that person in their friend list. All right. So that's good. Now context, I want to do friends and just pass that, that Python list. So there's that, yeah, the friends, and that should be good. Just scrolling up a little bit here. We could handle the else case here. We could handle the else case here. I'm just going to handle the is authenticated case, which is this one right here. So if they are not authenticated, then I want to return an HTTP response object saying uh, you must be friends to view their friends list. So if a person who's not authenticated tries to look at a friends list, it's going to give that HTTP response. And then at the end of the day, if all of this passes, all of this goes through, then we want to render the HTML template, uh, friendlist.html, which is the one that we just put in at the beginning of this video, which is this one right here, and then press control S on that. So now that you know what this view is going to look like, basically it's just going to contain um, two variables, this user and also the list of friends. And within that list of friends, we have this kind of unique structure of like showing their friend and then am I friends with that person? 
So that's that's what's happening inside of uh, friendlist.html. So you know, right at the top, right away, it checks. You know, are, do we have friends? And then we loop through those friends and just kind of build the view from there. So like, here's the profile uh, image. Uh, you can see friend. So friend.0, Remember that access is the first list entry. So remember here, like that would be like. Uh, so here's here's the the object from the loop, and then the first list entry is this. So uh, friend.0 would be the account, and then friend.1 would be the boolean determining if they're friends or not. So friend.0 is the account. Um, you know friend.0. Here's the account again. Uh, we have friend.0. This is going to be used later when we do the private chatting stuff. And then here we have friend.1. So this is this is the stuff for determining uh, the view with respect to are we friends with this person or not. So if friend.1, that means am I friends with this person? If yes, it says we're friends and then we get that circle check mark. So just to kind of remind you with the production website, that's what this is going to look like. So you'd have the, this kind of friends thing and that green check mark. If you're not friends, it says not friends and the red X. So that's this logic here. So if you're friends, you get the friends and then it says there's the check mark. Uh, otherwise, if friend.0 does not equal request.user, so if it's not you, it's, if it's not you who who is this entry, then you're not friends and you have the cancel button, with the, which is the red X. Um, otherwise, if this is you, then you have an entry that says, hey, this is you. So uh, I can just go to like this guy's profile here. And for example, if I look at his friends list, there, I'm his only friend, and it says that this is me. So that's that's this case right here. This is you, and then there's that person pin. And then, of course, our for loop counter down here, which makes sure that uh, the list entries are always in twos. So end the div, and then you create a new div. So that's uh, that's the view. And then this is this is for creating a private chat, which we're going to be using later. So now that we have our HTML template, we have our view built for showing the friends list. Now we need a URL for that. So we're going to go into the friend app and get that new view that we just built. So friend list view and paste it up at the top here, do a comma. Uh, and then we want to create that URL. So I'm going to, I'm going to copy the first line here. And this one's just going to be list. And it's going to take a keyword argument, which is the user ID whose, whose profile of whose profile that we're looking at. So friend list view, paste that in. And then the, the name will be just list. So it's going to be the friend app and then just list. So control S on that to save it. Now, before we move on to implementing the, or adding the link to get to this page, I wanna go into uh, account search, the account search view, because we need to update this. Because currently we just have it hard coded in here that everybody's false because we have no friends yet. But now that we have some friends, we can actually implement this and determine if a person who we're looking at is a mutual friend or not, or is is our friend or not. So here below account, I wanna make sure that the user is authenticated first of all. So if user dot is authenticated, uh, then we want to continue. I guess I can write the else case now. So otherwise, uh, we know we have somebody who's not authenticated. So I can say for account in search results and just do accounts dot append. So we're appending to that Python list. Uh, accounts dot depend append account and false. So this is like the hard coded version that we had originally. That's basically, you know, exactly, you know, actually I could have literally just cut this and put it right here because it's exactly the same. I could have done that, but I chose to write it out and then copy paste it anyway. But anyway, that's what we want to do. We want to hard code it. But if the user is authenticated, then we can determine if we are friends with them. So get the authenticated users friend list and then determine if we're friends. Uh, friend friend list and then determine if we're friends. So auth user friend list uh, equals friend list dot objects dot get user equals user. Now, now we want to do the loop and do the appending thing. So I'm just going to paste that in. So this is the same kind of loop, exactly the same loop as we did here. The difference being that here we don't want to just hard code in false. So in this case, I want to do auth user friend list dot is is mutual friend and I'm going to have to turn on word wrap here because I'm going to run out of room. So is mutual friend and then just pass that account. And then of course add that accounts to the context. So that should be good. That's pretty much exactly what we did in our friend list view here. It's the same kind of thing. We loop through them, we append, we determine if they are a part of our friends list. So that should be good. So I'm going to press control S on that. Now I want to go to account.html and there should be a link here to take me to a friends list. So I want to scroll down to where we have the friend list, which would be right here. It's got a comment friend list link. And we want to use that URL that we just built. So use a Django shortcut URL, 
uh, in the friend lip, uh, friends, uh, friend app, sorry, and do list. And the keyword argument there, I believe is user ID. So that's what we're looking for. So do user ID equals ID. And I think that should be good. So control S on that. Actually, I think that's it. Let's go to our development environment and take a look and see if everything's good to go. All right, so we got a couple of things we got to test. Number one is if I click on my profile, this should list all of my friends. Looks like WSGI object has no attribute user ID. So something is wrong here in friendlist.html. Sorry, actually not friendlist.html, it's friendlist view. So it looks like I did request.userid, that is not correct. So pressing control S on that after I change this to request.user. Now let's go back to the development environment, refresh this, and boom, there we go, that is my friends list. And that that is correct. If I click here, uh, we are friends. If I go here, yes, I'm friends with this person. Now the next thing I can check is to search the search view and see kind of who I'm friends with. So I just searched K and you can see I'm not friends with Blake and, it's, and it actually does say that, but I am friends with Kiba and that is true. Now let's go to Kiba's friends list and, and go, so go to her profile and click on her friends list and boom, there's me, I'm her only friend. So that's it, we've implemented a fully functional friends list. We can send friend requests, accept them, decline them, cancel them, remove them, and also search friends. We can also look at a friends list. So we can look at our friends list. We can go to someone who we're friends with and look at their friends. We can look at, um, we can try to look at other people's friends list, although it will not allow us. Basically everything we need to have a fully functional friend system, other than notifications, of course, and like private chat, which as you know, from the beginning of this video, we're going to be working on next, but it's not going to be free. You're going to have to go to codingwithmitch.com, which all of you should have an account by now because I've been endlessly harassing you to make an account. So if you haven't, I don't even know what to say anymore. You need to go and you need to go make an account and we're gonna learn about all kinds of really cool stuff. So this is kind of where the cool part of the course starts. We get to do private chat and this is all gonna be real time. So just kind of like Facebook Messenger, imagine that. Of course, not as many features, like there's no stickers and and GIFs and things like that, no drawing, just just basic chat and like emojis. You can, you can add emojis. Um, then we have public chat messaging. So there's going to be a chat room that everybody can join as long as they're authenticated. And that's of course a real time chat also from that you can like add friends obviously, because if you're in a public chat, you can click on a person's profile, go there, add them, private chat with them, all that kind of stuff. And also a, which I think is the coolest thing is a real time notification system. So if you send someone a private chat message, it creates a notification in real time up in the kind of notification header for the website. And it says, Hey, like whatever that the content of that message was, if you click that, it then takes you to a private chat room with them. Also notifications for friend requests and things like that. So if someone sends you a friend request, you get a little notification saying uh, this person sent you a request. You can either accept it or decline within the notification itself. So just, just like Facebook does, the same kind of thing. So if you haven't, go to codingwithmitch.com, sign up now. And also as kind of a teaser for what's coming in the future, after we finish this real-time sockets website, we finish all the real-time stuff, which we're starting now, I'm gonna build an Android app that does all of these things. So I'm gonna build an app that that essentially interacts with the website and has all the same features as the website. And it's going to interact with the real website in production, openchat.xyz. So that, oh, excuse me, I burped. Got so excited, I'm burping. That is going to be a real cool thing. I'm really looking forward to that. We're going to have notifications for chat messages, notifications for friend requests in, on Android. We're going to have real-time chat with the sockets on Android, all kinds of really cool stuff. You don't want to miss out and I will see you in the next video. And I mean that, by the way, I'll see all of you in the next video because I know you're going to sign up and become members because it'd be crazy not to. Getting all of this value for only $30 Canadian a month. Worth it. Sign up. I'll see you there.